right now we're building a library because we've been ransacking a place that has uh, a lot of books so let me just tell you the story of this civilization here so um, we're 500 years in and this civilization up here was mostly decimated uh, and I had thought it was because of goblins but what it turned out to be was there was a necromancer's tower over here and uh, all these places in orange are undead so the vast majority of these places were killed off by undead so when we came in there was five places they had a total of like I don't know 50 to 100 population so we reclaimed crude rooms um, and we started to take care of some of the undead forces up here uh, but this one proved too strong it had well over 300 undead goblins in it uh, and we fought and fought and fought and we were still at 300 goblins so now we're in a new fort um, we've taken out the we, we took out the dwarven tower over here and what I missed is that there's another one down here um, so we got work to do that's really what it is we're just trying to get the undead hordes away trying to, to regrow this civilization and uh, yeah Surprisingly enough, we have not fought very many undead here, or actually we've fought zero undead in this particular location, but we do have um, five um, weir moose um, in residence right now. So we have Ezum, the crass dwarf. Uh, we have three up here in, in these little walled off rooms. And then we have one more down here who is still a child bitten when she was just one I do not know what's on the other continents I haven't necessarily gone too deeply into that uh, there's other dwarven sieves over there there's some humans up here um, the elves down here goblins over on this place so yeah no I was very sad about that Uh, we are a mostly open cavern fort. I do lock the doors occasionally if I feel like I need to. And of course we're in an ad. So. Just stick around here for a minute. I'll actually queue up some sheer animal and spin thread jobs. Oh, I never planted here. Seeing multiple cavies in there. Yep. All right. So that should be it. I think we have our final grate to put in. And this is pretty exciting. I've been building this um, this magma pump for like I don't know four sessions or something like that. <laughs> been I've been working on it too long, um, but we're pumping from level negative one nineteen up to fifteen. So that's a hundred what one hundred thirty four Z levels. Now we just have to wait for the water to melt and profit. All right, how 
we doing in here? Uh, instructions, gem windows. Ocelot, thanks so much. And if you're familiar with blind streams, I do have dwarf redemptions on here if you want and, uh, and claim a dwarf. I only ask that, you know, keep it civil and all that. Plenty of dwarves that are unnamed at the moment. Ghostbat, thanks so much. So I may not be able to do regular streams for a while, but if we do get the uh, public domain stories challenge, I will ma make the time for that, right? Because that's supposed to be a special event kind of thing. Um, the last time we did something like that, we did The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Um, we'll do something else soon. Ocelot, what kind of dwarf would you like? So the, the, the way you do it is you say beard or no beard, which is roughly male or female. Um, and then what kind of role do you want? There's miners, there's woodworkers. You could have one of the nobility. So we have the mayor, the captain of the guard, a um, couple of militia captains, so those are military. But uh, So miners, woodworkers, carpenters, stone workers, rangers, trappers, metalsmiths, jewelers, craft dwarves. Clothiers, leather workers, book binders, farmers. Whichever one speaks to me as Ocelot, huh? Hmm. I just want to state that I don't necessarily know ahead of time what the dwarf is like before I say that. So if this dwarf's personality is not one that matches, that's going to be completely... Uh, you know, it's going to happen, potentially. Hmm. You know what? I have an idea. Give me one minute. We're going to go over and specify this as a library. Okay. The Bastion of Helms. And we are going to put in a scholar. Preferably not someone in the military. Medtob. And we'll put in a scribe. Ustuth. Yes. You're going to be Ustuth the scribe. Sailing Ocelot is 54 years old, altruistic, values competition, avoids excitement, has poor focus, sickly, and is gregarious. You feel well. Uh, Personality-wise, she is truly fulfilled by assisting those in need. She actively avoids exciting or stressful situation and enjoys the company of others. She generally acts impartially and is rarely moved to mercy. She does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity and tries to do things correctly each time. She is stubborn. She tends to consider what others think of her. She is quite comfortable with uh, 
with others that have a different appearance or culture. She tends to be swayed by the emotions of others and doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges. She does not mind being outside, at least for a while. And she's getting used to tragedy. Oh, no. Um, she dreams of raising a family one day and personally sees competition as reasonably important and doesn't care about art one way or another. Uh, likes tetrahedrite, silver, emerald, sloth bear leather, uh, gigantic tortoise shell. Oh, that's notable. Uh, the color brown, gems, bins, uh, gray parrots for their intelligence. When possible, she prefers to consume turnip wine, and she absolutely detests brown recluse spiders. Relationship-wise, she's got a lot of friends in the fort, some passing acquaintances, but no family. Um, uh, let's see here. Her nose bridge is incredibly concave. She has a broad chin. Her short nose is upturned. Her broad head is extremely tall. Her ears are somewhat broad. Uh, hair is chocolate. Medium length hair is neatly combed and her skin is pale brown and her eyes are bronze. Poor focus? Yes, true story. <laughs> Not clever enough to avoid stressful situations though. Who doesn't love gray parrots for their intelligence? For sure! What a fine specimen of dwarf. Well, may they be long lived. All right. And this library doesn't look like much yet, but you know what? We're going to be doing some things. Uh, first off, let's smooth some walls. No, not there. Eh, whatever, fine. <laughs> uh, furniture. We need bookcases. Do you feel like this is a bookcases in the center? Or do you feel like bookcases that line the walls? I think bookcases that line the walls. I usually do the center. All right, and now we need some tables. Some chairs. We need to make some more chairs. <laughs> Uh, we need some chests. This might be the first one that I allow all visitors to. Nah. Eh. I don't know. I guess it's fine. Artifact. The carpenter has been taken by a fey mood. Someone just finished reading uh, The World Without the Mountain Home. This is a Claro Opal bound codex. His written portion consists of a 78 page guide entitled The World Without the Mountain Home, authored by Einod Astvesh. It concerns the fortress Glee, Glee Glove. The writing is reasonably serious. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. <clears throat> All right. You've claimed a carpenter's workshop and seem to be gathering stuff already.
Someone also just finished The Fortress in Theory. The written portion consists of a 117-page guide entitled, excuse me, The Fortress in Theory, authored by Dishmab. It concerns the fortress jackal voice. The writing is somewhat self-indulgent. The, overall, the prose is amateurish at best. All right, now that these stockpiles seem to be working fairly well, I, eh, I don't know, I, I can make them smaller, but I guess there's fine. So one thing I was curious about, kind of looks like we're missing some artifacts up here. All right, you're on one. Oh, Lyrid. I'm sorry, where is that? Oh, it's in the coffer? No, it should be here. Put it on display. So glad you fixed this quantum stockpile finally. So many shrooms that needed to be cut down in the caverns. <laughs> Look at all these happy dwarves in here reading books. I'm sorry, why are Rhesus Macaque stealing our food? Obviously because we've left it in the trade depot. Do we have any prepared meals? No. How are we on food? We have a lot of food. Meals. Lavish meals. 30 of them, go. Also, Rhesus macaques are really on my list of animals that bother the heck out of me in this game. <laughs> Go right up there with Kias and I don't even know what else. traps oh, we do speaking of Reese's macaques oh water's flowing everybody are we ready I'm ready are you ready Thirty-eight hundred power. Needs twenty-seven hundred. Pull the lever, Kronk. Pull the lever. Here comes we the Weaver lore. And 
And there he goes. I'm not seeing lava spill everywhere. I'm seeing some amount of smoke. We'll, we'll just assume that's fine. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Kind of meant to put a floodgate in here as well. That way, if I ever needed to empty this out, I could. Oh well. <laughs> Ugh, cavey pups. I apologize to anyone who loves caveys. But no. Um, so for the most part, you don't adopt animals unless like you specifically set them to adoption. Um, so most of the animals that have been adopted by people or owned by people uh, came in that way. The problem with animals that have been adopted is you can never slaughter them which means a couple things one you have to find a place to store them safely and some animals are harder to store than others and two um, if that animal ever dies the person who was listed as the owner of them feels terrible about it so it's like really bad to have animals become pets even though they do get some positive feelings from it um, you're generally better off not having them be pets um, and for the most part you know animals will adopt when they can hey Paul Harvey thanks so much for the follow and welcome on in first time chatter I'm not sure that there's any other reason to uh, to have pets in general. Like I'm trying to think of what other reasons there would be. Oh right, we were making a um, artifact. Well, Ablel Odomvutok, the carpenter, has created a Rilbatakum, a bloodthorn animal trap. He offers it to the Wall of Bears. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's go check out this artifact, shall we? I completely forgot about it. Oh, and I still haven't done anything with that coffin yet. All right, I got to do that. Uh, this is a Bloodthorn animal trap worth $6,000. It is encrusted with cushion-cut pink jays, decorated with blue peafowl bone, and encircled with bands of spore tree and cave spider silk. This object menaces with spikes of siltstone, and we're in a save screen. So how's everybody doing? Doing well, I hope. Well, while we're waiting, I just want to remind everybody that we have Futures Lens and Realities Lens on sale now. <laughs> Long scene. We have lovely emotes by the artist Buation, who I'm also working on, are uh, working with to create a uh, children's book called 
Buttons the Super Dog. All right, uh, as I was saying, on the item is an image of Thicut Pointy Wound. <laughs> His last name is Pointy Wound. <laughs> Uh, the dwarf and dwarves in Bloodthorn. Thicut Pointy Wound is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Thicut uh, to the position of King of the Sling of Immortality, which is our civilization, in 217. Which, by the way, that's basically when the entire civilization fell apart. Um, on the item is an, I an image. On the item is an image in maple. What that image is, we don't know. Uh, the artwork relates to the storing of Queen Plunged in the Fence Sweetness in Everthrow in the late autumn of 512. Oh, we were storing an item and they made an, art, an image about that. Alright, on the item is an image of Dwarves in Pink Jade. The Dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of Everthrow by the Wall of Bears of the Sling of Immortality in the early spring of 507. We're almost up to 50, 517. We're almost here for 10 years. What a fine animal trap that is. Um, I feel like it would go really well in the Rangers Guild. So congratulations, Rangers. You have an animal trap in the middle of your floor. What was that? Why is there a raven in my floor? <laughs> How did you even get in here? Yeah, fine. You're fine. Alright, library's looking real good. We still need more tables, or chairs rather. We have any, everything else we need tables, bookcases, chairs, written objects. We need writing material. Maybe it's about time I learn how to make paper. I've never made paper or dwarf fort before. I feel like I was in the middle of something. Oh, right, we were filling this. All right, that's full, full. Um, yeah, let's start smelting stuff, huh? Uh, oh, actually, actually, hold on. Uh, this wood furnace can go away. This wood furnace can go away. Wood furnace can go away. Wood furnace can go away. Smelter can go away. Metalsmith's forge can go away. I guess we'll keep the ashery and soap maker's workshop for now. Uh, one second, everybody. So we're probably going to go for not more than an hour, but we're going to go for a little bit longer, okay? But now we have magma forges going. That bookcase wasn't done for some reason. Uh, oh, we also want to go down to here, and we can... Oh. All these seed bags are down here. <laughs> All right, we have a couple things to do. So this stockpile can go away. And we'll go up here. 
Um, I also wanted to create a quantum stockpile for charcoal. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be used, but uh, other materials, coal. Materials coal. And again, no bins. And then we'll make a track stop. Dump that way. Coal. Bars, other material, coal. Give to here, take from there. Done. Get rid of these. Assign a minecart. So that'll take care of the charcoal. Now we need a stockpile here. And this is just going to be for sandbags, not querns. I don't know that having a quantum stockpile for sandbags is really necessary, but this is what we got. Dump that way. I use the closest material. It's going to end up being like charcoal. Yeah, it's jet. That's fine. All right. Uh, this is for that one. This is just for sandbags. Give to here. Take from here. Sign a minecart and rename it to sandbags. There we go. All right, so here's the question. A lever was toppled? Oh no. Hopefully it wasn't tied to anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, stones. What do we have for iron? 210 limonite. So we're going to say eliminate 200. And then we're going to say pig iron 200. Uh, we're also going to say charcoal 200. And that's going to go up one. And then we'll do steel bars. 200. We better put a wood stockpile down here.
again, I don't know that there's much benefit of doing a quantum stockpile here, but it's fine. Thank goodness. All right. So this is just an artifact uh, lever I had put in the middle of the tavern for the purpose of getting knocked over, apparently. Let's actually move it, like, here. <laughs> an artifact lever? Well, you just happen to have someone... A mechanic who uh, claims a, mechan a mech mechanic shop, and then they'll do it. It's not like I planned it. It's just that's the way it ended up. Uh, I'm actually going to build a bridge. I was meaning to build a bridge here. Anyways. So we'll actually hook it up over here. And the idea here is I'll actually have people walking by it fairly frequently. That just made me twitch. <laughs> uh, we have cavern dwellers, I assume. Which, I mean, frankly, we've been very lucky. We have not had to deal with these basically at all. Send them back to the darkness, huh? Problem is, that's right where my livestock are. And I never did close up this this stairwell, so my military is going to be coming down this. They're going to see them down there, and they're going to climb down the walls. I don't want to lose all my livestock. All right, military. Meet here. Bye, kids. Love you. Have a good time. Kind of get me a little worried that I actually have someone out there right now. I don't seem to, though. Bye, kid. Love ya.
Yeah, I knew it. My military started jumping out. All right. Do not love this wanton bloodshed. Say Ulm, will that get me? No. Darn it. Start searching. tempted to go over there and just see if the Forgotten Beast will come attack me. Just one of us. Poor soul. Coolette. <laughs> Coolette's going to attack this fire-breathing... Fire uh... Yeah. Wow. I mean, good job. <laughs>
micro client over here. Okay, so I hope you all are having a good day. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me today. I wanted a nice long stream because it's been a long journey to get here. All right. Uh, the real question is, can we butcher that forgotten beast? Looks like no. What if we build a workshop right here? Still in really good shape for happiness in this fort. I love it. Um, one thing I did want to do is increase this up to say 200, and this up to 200. Kind of looks like no one's going to build this uh, butcher shop. <laughs> Which is not terribly helpful. Seriously, is someone coming to build this? Construct the building. Of course, it's the wounded one. <clears throat> one should always respect the law. like we're going to get some forgotten beast meat. That's always exciting. All right. Well, we'll let that happen. There's some metal over here. I wasn't sure. Oh, it's sphalerite. What can I do with sphalerite? Uh, excuse me, I want you to just dig out this so that I know what I can do with it. Is Sphalerite tin? Or is it lead? And I'm asking these questions, but I don't really need you to answer. I, I can figure it out once I, once I do it.
Here's our smelting is going on. Okay. We had copper equipment for a very long time. It's going to be very exciting for these dwarves to be up to um, 